Radio Free Innocence, episode 265, and I got a question. You ever wondered why so many black metal bands from Finland to Korea to even California use an extremely similar and extremely distinct aesthetic pattern language, harshly lit, stark black and white pictures that look like they've been Xeroxed six million times on a machine from the 80s, have song titles or even band member pseudonyms with made up words like and have occult looking circular sigils filled with weird swoopy lines making some kind of fucked up Lovecraftian gothic bat signal, all whilst claiming membership in the 666th chapter of the most unholy Hitlerian motorcycle club jihad. No, it's not just because of autism, or rather it's because of a very specific brand of autism. You see, a lot of the sort of visual language that black metal uses definitely comes out of the Norwegian scene of the early 90s, but as far as the really underground, really esoteric shit goes, perhaps the most influential artistic collective would be Les Légions Noirs, the Black Legions operating out of France. And that's who we're going to be talking about today. A lot of people associate the Black Legions, or the LLN, as a lot of people call them, was sort of like the mid to late 90s and the early 2000s, but they actually started going all the way back to the very tail end of the 80s with a couple of bands by the name of Chapel of Ghouls, and Zelda? Well, excuse me, princess. Of these two, I find Zelda to be a little bit more interesting and more indicative of several Le Légion Noir musical idiosyncrasies. So we're going to talk about them. Surprisingly enough, for a collective so closely associated with black metal, this initial output wasn't really black metal. It was more like a really weird outgrowth of tech thrash. The vocals are sort of a harsh shout pushed into being something like a black metal scream in terms of how it works with the music rhythmically. Speaking of rhythm, that's kind of one of the main ways this music stands out, along with this weird incorporation of clean guitar, where you have all sorts of these like ultra-complex tech thrax riffs cut up and rearranged in the most bizarre ways. A whole lot of odd time signature manipulation makes Coroner look about as simple as 2 plus 2. And yet, particularly in the more laid-back sections like this one, you can hear this sort of like dark, mentally ill atmosphere that would become the standout feature of so many Black Legion's acts later on particularly in its contrast between usage of very full guitar chords and a whole lot of dissonance, as well as emphasis on having songs with a whole lot of different changing sections, and very noticeable interplay between all of the instruments, guitar, bass, and drums. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about this rehearsal demo from 1991, even in the context of somebody being a really big Black Legions fan, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised, because it's really good stuff. Surprisingly well recorded for a 90s rehearsal demo from an un known band, particularly from one in the Black Legions, a name that has become synonymous with having the most raw production possible. Maybe the lack of attention this rehearsal receives is because it's more of like a weird prelude to the Black Legions that establishes certain songwriting conventions as opposed to being part of the Le Légion Noir Black Metal Collective proper. I don't know, whatever it is, I liked it. But now we're getting into the major foundational Black Metal bands of the Black Legions. First one being Torgeist, who... I know a lot of people like, and I'm not saying that they're bad. But it does seem like a major evolutionary step back from the kind of stuff that Zelda and Chapel of Ghouls were doing. A lot of it just sounds like Bathory worship, albeit very well done Bathory worship. I wonder if this is how Dag Nilsson felt moving from the Goat Lord rehearsal sessions to A Blaze in the Northern Sky with Dark Throne. A band that much more effectively continues the really weird stuff that Zelda and Chapel of Ghouls were doing would be the second member of the Black Legions we'll be looking at tonight that being Belketre. This band shared members with Zelda and Torgeist, and it seems to be a continuation of ideas that they were exploring back in the Zelda days, albeit in a new raw black metal context. There's a particular emphasis on interplay between the different instruments, as well as very lengthy instrumental sections, and an overwhelming atmosphere of darkness and sickness. Out of the more traditionalist black metal wing of the Black Regions, this is easily my favorite material. I particularly enjoy the guitar work, which like Zelda has that mix of dissonance and these wandering, adventurous, cleanly picked chords. But the drumming is also really cool and adventurous. What I'm trying to say is I like these guys a lot more than Torgeist. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Like a whole lot of very underground black metal musicians. The masterminds behind Torgeist and Belketre, that being Akon Ketre and Vodub. <laughs> Nigga, how you gonna give me shit for butchering the French language? That's not even French. Those are made up names in a made up language they invented for the Black Legions. Come on now. She, 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 she. But anyways, these two fellows also dabbled in some ambient side projects that were released under the Le Légion Noir moniker. However, this wasn't your typical sort of black metal dungeon synth type stuff. Instead, it's its own weird musical mutation in its own right. Akon Ketra had a solo project named after himself that was entirely guitar based. And I personally find it to be rather hauntingly beautiful and interesting. It reminds me of perhaps a more melodic outgrowth of the shorter songs on the first two Burzum albums, like A Crying Orc or Nar Himlen Klarner. The other fella, Vodib, did too many fucking consonants in this name. Come on, buddy. That guy, he went full fucking Boo! Haunted House! With his project Moevut, which utilizes a whole lot of keyboard drones and found sounds to create its honestly rather harrowing atmosphere. To this sonic melange, he then adds some very unique vocals, sort of black metal invocations mixed with some odd clean vocals here and there. It'll either come off as legitimately creepy or really fucking silly depending on what mood you're in, which I think was the point. There are plenty of other ambient LLN projects, just like there's plenty of other LLN black metal bands that I could talk about. I just happen to think that Akon Keatra and and Moivot are the two best. But speaking of those other bands, now we're getting into, for me, what is the really good shit coming out of the Black Legions. First up, we have the first band mentioned in this episode that doesn't feature anybody that was from Chapel of Ghouls or Zelda. In this case, we're talking about a set of black metal brothers. Like, I don't think they're actually related. It's kind of like how everybody in Immortal took the last name Doom Occulta as part of their black metal pseudonym. In this case, we have the Drakstrime brothers, Vlad and Vrolok, with their band Vlad Sepej. Now, I've seen this band mentioned quite a bit on the internet as an example of black metal that has no riffs to it. Not saying I heard that complaint from anybody in specific. <laughs> point is, I think it's incredibly off the mark, because not only is Vlad Sepej perhaps the most riffy of all the Black Legion's bands, it's some of the riffiest black metal I've ever heard, just in general. Their shorter songs are definitely very Bathory sounding, but unlike with Poor Guys, there's a considerable sense of liveliness and even a pretty hard-edged groove to the proceedings. Very catchy stuff, which is helped out quite a bit by the thicker than average for raw black metal guitar tones and the very nicely produced drums with a lot of reverb to the kick and all that. Big fan of their shorter songs. They also have a couple of instrumentals that have sort of an interesting marching militaristic feel to them. Really nice thick bass tone too, coupled with like all these weird little stick clicking tricks the drummer is doing. It has a very rustic pastoral feel to it. Also very effective use of guitar layering, bringing more and more voices in as the band marches onward. Check out this brutal fucking drum hit, dude. Hell yeah, dude, that'll put some fucking hair on your balls. Oh, I know what the ladies like. These wacky little militaristic instrumentals are actually some of my favorite Vlad Sepes material. And a lot of that has to do with the really creative drumming going on in them. It's all that wacky cymbal work. I'm not saying it's technically complex, but it's certainly very original and unique sounding, particularly for black metal. I mean, as far as depressive, suicidal black metal goes, this is almost the opposite of it. Uplifting. Good gym music. Their longer songs perform sort of an interesting balancing act between very dark, mysterious, obscure black metal and very majestic and triumphant sounding black metal. Right now you're currently in the middle of the dark and mysterious stuff, which utilizes a lot of that same sort of wandering around chords technique that you first heard in Zelda and later on heard in Belkitre, but in a much different atmospheric context. As I mentioned earlier, I honestly do not understand the argument this band has no riffs. I mean, this shit is incredibly catchy. Now we're starting to move into the more majestic and triumphant aspect of their sound. You can definitely hear that this shit had a lot of influence on Satanic War Master later on, particularly on the more melodious moments of the Opferblut and Noxera albums. 
And in fact, one of the most notable bands on the Satanic Warmaster guys label, War Moon Lord, is named after a Vlad Sepesh song. Vlad Sepesh would be my favorite of the Black Legion's bands, if not for the one glaring omission that I'm sure plenty of people have been screaming about as this episode has dragged on. That's right, we're talking about two dots over the U, two eyes right next to each other. Fucking mutilation. This is probably the LLN band that the largest amount of people are aware of. And there's a good reason for that, because when it comes to black metal and it comes to mutilation at their best, they're kind of the fucking best metal band out there. Particularly in terms of writing great black metal riffs because the main guy behind this project Maynach has a pretty darn unique guitar playing style that stems back to Mutilation's earliest demos. It's sort of the ultimate distillation of the interesting chord techniques bands like Zelda and Belkitre were using. I mean how many riffs he heard sound like this in a black metal band? To that, he adds, as you're hearing now, a very interesting sort of classic thrash metal sensibility almost. So you get these weird waltzing black metal riffs with a hefty amount of thrashy groove to them that really helps the guitar playing pop. And then he sort of suspends them in this miasma of, again, very dark and mysterious sounding tremolo picked riffs, which makes for some very multifaceted songwriting. Really cool stuff. And that's just on the demos, which compared to the albums are just okay. But when you finally get to that first mutilation full-length album, I would almost say it's like perfect black metal. If you ever wondered where bands like Zaster, Drowning the Light, a whole lot of Judas Iscariot stuff, and of course Peste Noir got their melodic sense from, Mutilation is almost single-handedly responsible for that style of black metal guitar playing. But what really makes Mutilation stick out from the pack for me is his expert sense of songwriting. I mean, look how effectively he's building anticipation and tension with just this simple start-stop phrase leading into the tremolo picking. You know when that wave finally crashes, it's gonna be fucking brutal. <laughs> His vocals on the early Mutilation albums are honestly some of the best I've ever heard as far as being a black metal vocalist goes. This part coming up here is super sick. We're going back into that same sort of wandering chord type thing he's doing at the beginning of the song, but he's completely turned it inside out and added this really cool sort of groove to it that hits you right in the gut once the drums really start up. Check this shit out, dude. Guitar playing in this is unreal. Let's move attack those chords. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the vocals are basically perfect. One almost wants to make monolithic, arrogant statements like, this is what black metal is supposed to sound like. I mean, it's hard not to. Here comes an even more impressive groove section. That same sort of transition building tension into when that drum beat finally hits. Right about now. Like, if you claim to like black metal and you don't like the album Vampires of Black Imperial Blood, I don't know what to fucking tell you, man. This is, in fact, that good shit. And it's not just all that epic, majestic, depressive stuff, either. Mutilation's got a lot of variety to it. I mean, are you hearing this guitar riff? Fucking unreal. So weird, yet so catchy and dark. It's like the best moments of Peste Noir, except you only had to spend 14 bucks on the Drakkar website, instead of 50 bucks on a wooden cheese box that won't fit on your shelf, and then having to wade through, you know, however many minutes of hip hop samples and barnyard animal noises. This dude's guitar playing, so many bands have not even just been influenced by this style, but have like flagrantly ripped it off. And honestly, in all my years of listening to black metal, I've come to the conclusion that nothing quite beats the original when it comes to this kind of shit. So that first Mutilation album, amazing. Second Mutilation album, also amazing. Technically was recorded before the first one, but released much later on for reasons we'll get into. He actually recorded most of it back in 1993, which is fucking mind-blowing. And it actually dips pretty heavily into ambient territory, but like Ekon Ketra and Moavat, it's not any kind of ambient you've heard anywhere else before. Kind of like Vlad Sepej, this album starts out with an instrumental. This was the first mutilation track I ever heard way back when I was like 16 or something. I've been hooked ever since. The vocals on this album are uh, particularly hellish, even as far as mutilation goes torturous shit I've ever heard. About tied with that second Bethlehem album. 
Normally I don't give a fuck about intros on black metal albums, but you don't skip Suffer the Gestalt. It's so fucking good, and it builds up to the black metal portion of the album perfectly. The main difference between this one and Vampires of Black Imperial Blood, I would say the first Mutilation album is more gleefully evil. This is more like depressively, morbidly evil. Although it does get fast and blistering at points. Suitably dark and satanic, but where this album really shines is when it gets to the slow, doomy portions. Like this riff right here, this shit is fucking perfect and it's so damn evil sounding. The raw tone of the guitar is just perfect, particularly when he hits the bottom note of the chord. It's sort of this morbid funeral dance thing, it's so nasty. And then he pulls back into even more minimalism. It's an absolute beast of a slow black metal riff. The atmosphere is just about pitch perfect. His guitar playing is wonderfully subtle. He really knows when to lean into certain notes and let others just kind of fade out into all the feedback and screeching guitar noise. And yes, that feedback is very important. That absolutely sewer level demo guitar sound is important. Everything on this album is important for it to be as successful at being ultimate black metal as it is. I know what you're thinking. Job, if mutilation's so great, why don't you talk about them more? I think this is the first time I've ever heard you mention them. Well, there's sort of a weird thing with mutilation. And it actually starts with this album. See, you get through those first five tracks, it's all amazing A plus black metal. Then you get to the last two tracks, you're hearing something like. I mean, it's not awful, but uh, it's not great, and it's clearly not from the same recording session. Something happened here. And then you read the liner notes of the album, and it says that Maynock, the guy behind Mutilation, is fucking dead. And this is a posthumous release. The first five tracks are from 1993. The last two tracks are from 1996. Last shit he worked on before he fucking died. And it's like, okay, I understand why that sounds like ass. Except that's not actually what happened. Maynock didn't actually die. What happened is Maynock apparently got kicked out of the Black Legions for getting addicted to narcotics, which is already somewhat humorously quaint to think of, you know, the black metal scene in the 90s ejecting somebody for doing drugs, you know, in this world of the popularity of bands like Shining and Grousome Kite. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. But whatever. He got too fucked up, he couldn't do the band anymore. Puts out a statement to kind of like keep the air of mystique about the whole Black Legions thing going. I can respect that, you know. Part of the appeal of black metal in general and then La Legion Noir in particular is the mystique surrounding everything. You know, the pageantry of it. But that's not where it ended either. Is that all you got, nigga? Oh, no, nah, nigga. That's just the tip of this eye, buddy. Because in 2001, Homeboy Maynock comes back with an album entitled Black Millennium, Grimly Reborn. Millennium spelled with one N, because everybody fucks that word up. And on the album cover, he's in his corpse paint in a wheelchair, and the gimmick is supposed to be that his corpse has been wheeled out to continue creating black metal, and it's the cheesiest, dumbest fucking thing, and I can't take it seriously anymore. Like, later mutilation, it's okay, but it's nothing great, and it certainly doesn't hold a candle to the material he was putting out in his prime and just the whole like fake death coming back in the fucking wheelchair thing. I don't know, man. It puts a bad taste in my mouth. The Legion Noir, when they're at their best, I'm talking those first two mutilation full lengths, the march to the Black Holocaust split between Belkutre and Vlad Sepej, the Black Legion's medal split between Torgeist and Vlad Sepej, Moevat's Abezij Voriat demo, Econ Ketres Dans la Forêt demo, and Black Murder's Feasts demo, which is actually sort of a side project between between Vordaba and the two of the Drakstrime brothers. All that shit's fucking fantastic. If you want to get into the other stuff, and there's a whole lot of it, trust me, do so at your own peril because some of it's good, some of it's real fucking bad. And that's about all I gotta say about that. Thanks for watching or listening or whatever you did. Tune in next time for more stuff. Bye bye. When I go outside to smoke a cigarette and there's a pro in the area, they immediately recognize me and they start calling like, ah, ah, ah.